How's it going everyone? Welcome back to my question time video series. Today I've got a great couple of questions that were asked over on my FormSpring account that I'm going to run through. So uh, let's get started with the first question. First up is from Bilal Katab and he asks, what do you use most often as an image format, JPEG, JPEG or PNG? And it's interesting how he's, how he's uh, asked this because he's written JPEG is in JPG followed by JPEG is in JP, JPEG and then PNG. So I guess first uh, first thing is JPEG is in JPG and JPEG is in JPEG, uh, both exactly the same thing. I think the um, the difference is something between DOS and Windows, something where uh, one of the later versions allowed for three or four letter um, suffixes. Is it a suffix? Yeah, prefix, suffix, suffix. <laughs> so uh, JPEG and JPEG are both exactly the same things. Uh, between the two, I think I just tend to use JPG, since it's a, a three-letter uh, acronym and um, it can, just fits in with the rest of the image formats that we use, like GIF or PNG uh, or video formats like MP4 or Move, MOV. Um, so yeah, I just I use between the two JPEG and JPEG. It's, it doesn't really matter, but I I use the JPG uh, version. Um, in terms of uh, images overall, it all depends on their uh, purpose uh, and, and, and what the content of the image is, depending on which, which format I'd use. Um, a JPEG is more suited to uh, an image with lots of colour uh, variations in colour, so it could be like a photograph or anything, or any sort of web interface with gradients. Whereas a PNG I'd use for elements such as a, a web interface button, which is made of solid colours. The difference between a PNG and a JPEG is to keep the file size down on a PNG, you limit the number of colours in the palette, which helps maintain a sharp image as long as you've obviously, uh, you're not going over the number of colours that are used in that, um, you know, in that file. Whereas a JPEG, it uses the full spectrum of colours, but in order to reduce the file size on a JPEG, you use compression. Uh, and like I'll say, I'm sure you've seen in Photoshop, you can file safe the web. If you drop the compression right down, it starts to look all uh, you know blocky and, and fuzzy, and that's how you can end up with a, a less sharp image, although it maintains the full range of colours. So basically, the general rule of thumb is uh, any image with lots of colour variations use a JPEG. Uh, otherwise, if you've got an image with very few colours, use a PNG to keep the file size low. And what I tend to do, any if there's one that's like quite a few uh, different um, you know different color variations in it but it's quite a, a small size I'll often uh, flick between JPEG and PNG in the uh, Photoshop save for web dialog just to check on the uh, you know on the overall file size down in the corner so for example if I was exporting a web button that did actually have lots of gradients on it I might still use the PNG format just to maintain those sharp edges Whereas a JPEG might result in a lesser quality image, even though it may, it'll maintain those uh, that full spectrum of colour. Um, a PNG might be able to fit those those colour swatches within that file and maintain a small file size while maintaining a better, uh, sharper quality image. It's also worth talking about uh, the PNG 24 format, which is the PNG format that maintains an alpha transparency. Unlike uh, plain old GIF images, or PNG images where you need to select the, the matte colour. Uh, uh, a PNG 24 with the alpha transparency can be overlaid on any colour and you won't have that fuzzy outline. So obviously I'll use those for, for any sort of transparency elements nowadays because I don't tend to support IE6, whereas any browser uh, since IE6 will support the alpha transparency. So well, that's about it for the, the question in terms of what image format I most use, and at least for, for web design. Uh, if I'm creating any designs for print, I'll probably use uh, JPEGs if I'm exporting any, any images from Photoshop or maybe even a TIFF file depending, I don't know, it's just out of habit whether I'd use JPEG or TIFF. Probably a JPEG nowadays, so I think the file size tends to be a bit uh, smaller. Then uh, finally, the next question for today is from Mike. He asks, a uh, quick question for you. Apologies if it's been asked before, which it hasn't, so it's, it's okay. <laughs> Fonts. Which tool do you use to manage yours and is there something out there that you can preview and sort into groups? Uh, there's plenty of uh, different font applications. I've used in the past Suitcase, which is a, a Mac application. I think that's pretty expensive. I only used to use that back when I was uh, working at a local design studio. Um, 
I should really have researched this before, but I can't remember the name, but I think there's, um, I, well, I use Font Explorer X, which is a free version, which is quite hard to find nowadays. You have to do some, some digging around in Google to, you know, to dig up this, this free version, but that's one, the one I use. You can get uh, a premium uh, version of Font Explorer, which comes along with some uh, handy plugins for InDesign and Illustrator and possibly Photoshop that if you load up a, um, you know, a design that's got a certain font uh, within the, the document and it needs to open it, you know, as, as one of your, that's currently, uh, one of your fonts that's currently deactive, it'll, it'll ask you if you want to activate that font and all these apps you can, uh, you know, manage them and put them into groups and different sets, uh, which allows you to, uh, you know, activate certain sets of fonts or certain, certain fonts to help save your uh, computer memory. So the one I use, like I mentioned, Font Explorer X, the free version, uh, if I can manage to dig out this, um, this uh, link to this free version, I'll put it down in the, uh, the actual post so you can uh, maybe try it out for yourself. That's obviously a Mac application, but uh, it's definitely worthwhile saving the DMG for the future if you do want to use it, because it's, uh, it's a file that does seem to be uh, getting buried deeper in the, in the archives of the internet. <laughs> so, uh, Hope that, uh, hope that helped out. I think that's about it for the questions for this time. I've gone on long enough. I don't want to keep these too long nowadays. I think uh, a, sh a shorter image is going to be uh, you know, easier to just sit back and, and watch while you're uh, at work or whatever you're doing throughout the day. So if you want to ask a question for a future episode, have a, head over to my FormSpring account and drop it in on there. Or you can add it down, down in the comments on this post. Or even send it over through uh, email. Uh, I'll pick odd ones out for the next time and hopefully my information will help out. So uh, thanks so much for watching this one. I uh, hope the info helped. Uh, I'll catch you all later.